Welcome to Neurology News Network. I'm Jenna Pasco. Let's get into the news from this week. Preliminary data presented at the 2019 International Epilepsy Congress in Bangkok, Thailand shows that ASI's parampanol, marketed as Ficompa, is safe, effective, and well-tolerated as monotherapy in previously untreated patients with partial onset seizures or primary generalized tonic-clonic seizures. Parampanol is currently being evaluated in a Phase 3 multi-center, open-label, uncontrolled study known as Freedom in patients aged 12 and older with partial onset seizures with or without secondary generalized seizures. The ongoing study, which includes patients from Japan and South Korea, consists of a six-week titration period followed by a 26-week, four milligram per day maintenance period. If a patient experiences seizures during the maintenance period, they are titrated up to eight milligrams per day parampanol, followed by a 26-week maintenance period. Among those included in the four milligram intent to treat population, 63% achieved seizure freedom, and 65% of those with secondarily generalized seizures were convulsive seizure free. Treatment emergent adverse effects were reported in 78% of patients, with the most common being dizziness, somnolence, nasopharyngitis, and headache, all of which were consistent with the drug's known safety profile. Intranasal midazolam is both safe and rapidly effective as an alternative first-line therapy for status epileptics, according to findings presenting at the 2019 International Epilepsy Congress. More than 57% of patients who received intranasal midazolam were responders, with status epileptics seizing an average of 5 minutes and 5 seconds. Based on the findings, Dr. Laura Kay and colleagues concluded that intranasal administration of midazolam appears to be an easily applicable and rapidly effective alternative to buccal and intramuscular application as first-line treatment of intravenous route is not available. A group of studies helped confirm what previous literature has described, that children with epilepsy, particularly those with refractory disease, experience higher rates of sleep disorders than those without and that these comorbidities are damaging to patients' quality of life and social adjustment. A trio of unrelated studies showed high rates of sleep disorders in patients with epilepsy and all suggested that these comorbidities may be underestimated and under-evaluated. All three studies are presented as posters at the 2019 International Epilepsy Congress. For more coverage of IEC 2019 and other neurology news, head to neurologylive.com. This has been Neurology News Network. Thanks for watching.